Hi guys, welcome to my channel Sewing Stash. My name's Jody, and today we're gonna talk about all the things that you're gonna need to get started with sewing. So let's get into it. So, the first thing you are gonna need is a sewing machine. It does not need to be fancy, it does not need to cost you hundreds of thousands, um, or hundreds for that matter. What it does need to do is two things. It needs to do a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch, if you can see there. My advice would, however, be, wherever you get your sewing machine from, is that you go for a properly branded machine. Um, this one is a brother, there's other sewing machines, I'm sure you've heard of Singer, um, Juki, Jamoni, there are so many um, great brands out there. And I would suggest you go for a sewing machine within your price range, or even get one secondhand, but I would 100% recommend that you go for a proper sewing brand. The reason why I say this is my first, 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 first ever sewing machine that cost me 40 pound from Hobbycraft lasted me a week. And it lasted me a week because it couldn't sew anything. It couldn't pick up the bobbin thread and it just juddered along and it, it ate up all my fabric and it was just not worth the 40 pounds that I paid. So lessons learned. So yes, definitely go for a branded sewing machine a well-known reputable brand, you don't have to spend hundreds. You can start off as, as little as under 100 pounds for your first brand, but I wouldn't suggest a hobby craft one. Next thing I would suggest, and it will probably come with your sewing machine anyway, is a seam ripper. So they can look all fancy, mine looks like a pen, um, but essentially it rips out all the stitches when you've made a mistake. and you will make plenty, I make plenty, we all make plenty, such is life. So 100% you'll need one, I'm sure one will come with your machine and it will work just fine. The tallest pointy tip here, that is the part that you put underneath your stitch and you cut it and then you can pull the thread out once you do that a few times. So definitely need one of those. Another thing that I cannot say enough and I wish that I knew is um, decent thread. I made the mistake of buying really cheap thread. It wreaked havoc in my, she in my machine, it snapped, it didn't stitch half the time, um, I was having to keep re-threading, it just, it just was not worth it. So Gutman is an absolutely brilliant thread make, it is highly trusted and highly recommended. Um, so you definitely need some of this um, thread. God, I forgot what it's called then. Um, you'll definitely need some of this thread. So uh, thread's a whole a whole nother ball game. Um, it come, there's so many different types of thread. You're starting out, you just need cotton or polyester. Um, and that, that will see you through most of your projects. So as a huge beginner, when I first started, I did not know what kind of thread to use, but 100% cotton, 100% polyester, or a mixture of the both, and that will see you through most of your projects. The next thing I'm gonna suggest is needles. So when I first started again, I had one needle in my machine and I attempted to sew all different thicknesses of fabric and it didn't work. Um, so what I would suggest to you is you can pick up a universal pack of needles, if this will focus, with the majority of sizes. So this starts off from a 10 all the way up to a 14. And again, that will see you through most, if it will focus, sorry. Um, most thicknesses of fabric. I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to focus. It's really annoying. Um, oh, there we go. There's a little bit of focus there. So it starts off from a 10, which is there, and goes all the way up to a 14. Um, and yeah, they, they, they will see you through, to be fair. These were really cheap. These were like two pounds, something on Amazon. Um, so I'd suggest getting a few packs of those. There are multiple different needles out there, but if you are just beginning, 
just get a good range of universal size needles. So the next thing um, I want to talk to you about is fabric. So when you're first starting out, um, it doesn't matter kind of whether you're making cotton, um, whether you're making pillowcases, or whether you're making um, dresses and things like that. The easiest fabric to sew with is cottons and poly cottons. This is a cut off of a fat quarter of my daughter's. Um, and they are really forgiving. So if you mess up stitches, you can take your stitches out and you won't be able to tell that you are putting a, a line of stitch in that didn't work. They don't slip around, they are not stretchy, and they are absolutely brilliant for most projects. You can make um, blouses, you can make t-shirts, you can make pillowcases, you can make toys out of this kind of fabric. 100% um, would recommend that you start off with a nice, forgiving fabric that is not gonna ruin your life. <laughs> I, I think I started um, on some poly cotton, which was amazing, and then I thought, oh, I can do this, and I went off and picked some really slippery mermaid fabric, and it it got in my machine and everything like that, and it just ruined my life, um, and that was it. I was like, oh, I can't do this, I am so rubbish. Um, but it, it was not knowing what fabric I was using and not knowing what I was doing with it. So the next thing that you will need are pins. I've, got it on here at the minute so pins or wonder clips Let's see if you can see those oh they're all falling out so they're like little um focus man sorry um so they're like little uh doggy clips little bulldog clip kind of situation going on there i think um absolutely love these um uh, mostly because i stab myself so many times with pins like i'm even now um I, I can't sew a project without having a pin literally sticking out my finger. So I do absolutely 100% recommend these. These are really, really cheap um, from Amazon. They're great for just attaching your fabric together or attaching your fabric and your patterns together. Uh, just make sure you take them out, obviously. Don't run a machine under them. They won't like that. And obviously, like I said before, pins, again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, I started out with these really cheap from China because they just had a button on them so they were super cute um, and they served me really really well. Um, I've got some other pins, I think these ones are meant to be more for silky fabrics um, but they still leave a mark in the fabric so I use, I use clips instead. Um, so definitely you'll need some pins or some clips, that is an absolute must. Um, the other one I'd say is, I've already showed you my pin cushion, haven't I? But, um, pin cushions. Uh, they can come in magnetic ones, they can be ones like this. I prefer stabbing my pins into something. Other people have like a magnetic tray. It really doesn't matter, whatever you wanna use. But if you're gonna use pins, have a pin cushion, obviously. It's just kind of, it's common sense, isn't it, really? So, the other thing I was gonna talk to you about is markers or chalk markers versus chalk it doesn't matter it is a personal preference um okay sometimes it matters a little bit um fabric wise but you can get chalk and you can get markers and i've got both and i still use both even to this day again it's not expensive i mean some people even use soap i think that's amazing like I might get out the Dove soap from my bathroom, actually. <laughs> but, yeah, so I I like the chalk if my lines don't have to be accurate. Um, I do sometimes struggle to get an accurate line with them, but I think that's just me in general. Um, so I prefer using pens. I mean, this this pen here has um, got a nice, nice small nib so I can get, like, an accurate, accurate marking. Now, I need to say these pens are actual fabric pens and their purpose is for marking fabric. So this is a waterproof eraser pen and this one is an air drying pen that the writing's actually disappeared on. Um, and I, I use these mostly, if I'm honest, um, to mark out my fabric and do all my darts and things like that. So whatever your choice, it, it doesn't matter. Try chalk, try pens, try both, you know, give it a go. Honestly, it, it really doesn't matter. You'll, you'll find what, what you like using. So the other thing 
<clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> wanted to say, was scissors. Um, you're gonna need scissors, obviously, for cutting out your fabric. Now, these garden shear looking things are actual fabric scissors, and then these are my paper cutting scissors. These were my fabric scissors until I cut paper with them, and now they don't cut fabric anymore. Like, I've tried sharpening them, and they, they just don't do it. They just don't work. They cost me five pounds. I could take them to a shop to have them sharpen them, but they charge you five pounds to sharpen your scissors. They cost me five pounds, but they work well with paper. So these were my fabric scissors, but as a newbie, I made that mistake and I cut paper as well, and now they're too blunt for fabric. So I have these. These work relatively well. They, they go like that. So this is the flat blade. It goes along the, um, oh, sorry, there we go. It goes along the fabric and it helps for cutting out so that you don't, you're not lifting up your fabric too much when you cut them. So they're okay. You can use whatever fabric scissors you like. It honestly does not matter. The other thing in terms of cutting is a rotary cutter. Now this is my preferred method of cutting out um, if you do decide to go with a rotary cutter, you will need um, a cutting mat. This is my daughter's um, small one. I have a big one on my table. Um, small ones are good for little things, but if, like me, you want to do dressmaking and things like that, you will need a bigger one. Now, mine sits underneath uh, on my dining room table. They are um, quite big, so you will need a place to store them, and they do need to be stored flat. But if you are interested in this, it is essentially a wheel. I don't want to touch that blade, but this turns round when you push it. And obviously you have the handle to squeeze it in and out. Super sharp, super easy to replace the blades. So you don't, unlike scissors, you don't have to worry about sharpening them. Absolutely love it. I find for me personally, because I'm rubbish with cutting out with scissors, that I get a more accurate cut with these. Again, you might be awesome. and You're probably awesome at cutting out with scissors. I mean, I've been doing it since I was a preschool but I still can't do it. So this is my preferred, start again. This is my preferred method. So that's what I use. Another thing you'll need is a tape measure, obviously for measuring things. I mean, I don't, do I need to explain a tape measure? Probably not, probably not. Get a tape measure, accurate tape measure. Um, doesn't have to cost you hundreds of thousands either. Um, yeah, tape measure. We, we know what a tape measure is. I'm not, I'm not gonna go on about tape measures. The other thing you'll need if you're tracing your pattern, especially if you're starting out, um, I mean, I, I cut a lot of my patterns now, um, but before I traced everything, um, I think I only cut my patterns because I'm a bit of a lazy sewer, if I'm honest. Um, and there's been many times when I've cut a pattern and I've cut the wrong size and it's too late. So I would still suggest, be patient, trace your patterns. But tracing paper, apologies, this is a, see, when I used to cut out, when I used to trace and uh, cut out things. So this tracing paper, as you can see, you can see right through, absolutely amazing, nice and strong. I think I got this on Amazon. Um, I actually really, really like it. The only thing negative about this tracing paper is, um, it comes in like quite a, a small roll, I think it's like 30 centimetres, which is fine, it's not really a big issue. You cut pieces of tracing paper and stick them together, don't you? Um, I don't, I'm, like I said, I hate that, that's far too much work for me. So I, I tend, because I, I like to do dressmaking, I buy a big metre roll um, lengthwise of paper um, and use that to trace out. Now honestly, I just search tracing paper for sewing on Amazon, you will come up with loads. Um, I've got this other one here that I found that I also purchased at one time. Um, again, lovely and transparent. It's like um, the tissue paper that you get with most sewing patterns, but it's stronger um, and doesn't, this is where it's gonna tear on me, isn't it? It doesn't actually tear and rip as easy as you can see. Oh, I'm glad that worked. So tracing paper is a must. Um, I go by the reviews. I don't necessarily buy the same tracing paper each time, as you can tell. I just generally want something that's transparent and that I'm gonna be able to see my patterns through. And that is that simple. 
Um, so I just go by Amazon reviews um, and that's what I'd suggest to you. So lastly, I would say um, pattern weights. Pattern weights, pattern weights, pattern weights. So these are my pattern weights. Um, these were really expensive actually for what they were. I think this was like 20 quid or something. Um, essentially what they are are just washers. They're just washers that have been painted. Um, so I've seen this really cool thing that um, loads of people do and they get giant um, metal washers from, from like B&Q for a couple of quid and they use those and they work just as well. Or what I started out with, just anything heavy, just to weigh your, your pattern pieces on top of your fabric, you <laughs> household items. It really doesn't matter. So you don't have to have these. You do, you do not have to have these. But just so you're aware, when you're starting out and you need to keep everything flat, keep everything in place, find household items, and then later on, invest in, some, in um, pattern weights or make some yourself. So lastly, I think is just going to be a different type of measuring gauge so this is for your seams um especially if you're dressmaking or actually no just in general if i'm honest so this is if it focuses there we go this moves up and down and this is how i make hems and things like that so i, I line it up oh god it's going everywhere i apologize line it up with the end essentially and then turn my fabric over and then i'll push that gauge up to where i want it to be and that's maybe say for argument's sake that was the size that i wanted my hem to be or um, my seam allowance or anything like that so i find these super super helpful so i think in terms of um equipment i'm pretty sure that's that's it i mean you don't even have to go this far you could literally start out with a sewing machine a needle some thread and some scrap fabric and get going um all the things that I've suggested are things that will help you when you actually want to like get on and do your projects. So it is good to have them at hand, especially when you start out sewing. You're really excited to do all these wonderful, weird and wonderful things. So I really hope that this video has been helpful. Um, if it has, if you can give like a, a like and subscribe, I suppose. This is my first ever vlog, so this is all really new to me. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. That's what people say, right? Okay, that's what I say. Um, and if there's any of the videos um, you want to see, please um, comment down below. I will read them, 100% uh, promise. I know that I have been asked to do a video on um, things that you want to get when you've been sewing a little bit longer. Um, so I will I will promise I'll do a, another video on that at some point. And um, some other bits and bobs that people have requested. But please, please, please um, put your comments down below, even if it's just a laugh at my first ever vlog. I do not mind. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.